After a good run well into the 1300 range, gold has fallen to its lowest in two months. Our next guest, Peter Schiff, the founder of Euro Pacific Capital, has been bullish on precious metals, given where he believes we are in the business cycle. But even silver has hit its lowest level in weeks. So Amira first asked Peter if there was a reason for precious metals investors to get skittish. Take a look at how he responded. I think you just ride them out. I think it's the, it's the bears that should get skittish. I think anybody who is foolish enough to be short. Remember, when the year began, we had for the first time ever, hedge funds were net short gold. And gold has been a great performing asset uh, so far this year. I'm not sure how many of these hedge fund shorts are still out there. I know this has been a horrible year for hedge funds, one of the worst in memories. Being short gold is probably one of the reasons. And, and so they're the ones that should be nervous. I think the long-term buyers uh, should be very, uh, you know, heartened by what's going on. Uh, everything seems to be validating the thesis of being long gold, uh, short the dollar. And I think this is still early in, in the gold bull market. So if anything, uh, gold bulls should be using this uh, dip as an opportunity to, uh, to add to their positions. Yeah, I was just going to ask you that. It seems like uh, the most opportune time to really get in, into the market, into the resource, if you have not already. Um, but let me ask you, I mean, you've also been bullish on emerging markets, which have also seen a dip on this Fed hawkishness as of late. The Bank for International Settlements warned on Thursday that uh, a corporate debt binge for emerging market countries that started in 2010 is now starting to come due. They're looking at payments of $340 billion. Are you worried at all about the risk for uh, financial distress in coming years? Well, you know, I think a lot of that was factored into the emerging market stocks the last several years based on the anticipation of these, these debts coming due and based on the idea that the dollar would be much stronger and therefore the, the debt payments a much bigger burden and also the, the weakness in commodity prices, many of these countries, commodity exporters. But I think as the Fed is failing to deliver the rate hikes, hikes that everybody anticipated and the dollar begins to weaken and you start to see strength in commodities, look at how well oil bounced off of 40, you know, a dip below 40 uh, very recently and then quickly rose uh, just uh, Friday, got back above 49. Many of the oil stocks uh, hit new 52-week highs. They traded very, very strong. They didn't make new lows when oil went back below 40. I think that was very encouraging. So I think the markets, are, again, are starting to look beyond the rate hikes to the rate cuts and to a, into a weaker, not a stronger dollar. All of this is going to be good for emerging markets because they already were punished uh, based on the idea the dollar would be stronger and that rates would be higher. And so as these forecasts turn out to be wrong, I think there's going to be a big re-rating. And you can already see these markets reacting. I mean, emerging markets year to date are certainly doing better than the U.S. stock market. And I think a lot of the gains uh, just began, I think, even in the second quarter. And even though there's a little bit of a pause going on right now with all the rate hike talk, I think all this talk will be out of the way uh, by next week once we get through the Jackson Hole. Uh, meeting and maybe again we get another look at the, the second quarter GDP which could be even weaker than the initial report which was also much weaker than expected. Well Peter anyone that knows you knows that uh, you have uh, spotted a recession you think either we're in one or we're on the cusp of one and I've heard you make references both to what we saw happen in 2001 with the dot-com uh, bubble bursting and then of course uh, to the financial crisis of 2007 2008 in your view uh, it, it, which one is more similar to what we're seeing happen today. Well I think it's going to be more similar as far as the way the markets react to what happened when the uh, dot com bubble burst than when the uh, you know real estate bubble burst and we had the financial crisis because back in the 1990s everybody was preparing for a strong dollar. The dollar had this big rise uh, and people thought that the Fed was omnipotent. You know, Alan Greenspan was the maestro. We had the new era, the new economy, the dot coms. Uh, so our markets were the envy of the world. Everybody wanted to buy U.S. stocks because they wanted our tech stocks. They wanted internet. They wanted the dollar. And we had these uh, short term uh, on paper anyway, budget surpluses, and people believed they would continue indefinitely. They were talking about the U.S. paying off the national debt and being debt free. And all this nonsense played into a big dollar rally. And when that bubble burst in 2001, it ushered in a seven-year dollar bear market. The dollar index went from 120 down to a record low near 70. That ignited the bull market in gold. Gold went from under 300 to 1,000. 
Oil went from under 20 to 150. Uh, all the emerging market stocks exploded. Some of these markets were up four or five hundred percent. I think that's what we're headed for now. Another huge disappointment where everybody who bet on the U.S. and bet on the Fed bet wrong. People are going to find out uh, that this was just a gigantic bubble, not a real recovery. It's not like 2008. It doesn't remind me of that, other than the fact that people are wrong. Because if you look at how the markets were trading going into 2008, gold was at a record high, the dollar was at a record low, everybody was already bearish on the dollar uh, and bullish on commodities, and they were just blindsided to the financial crisis. And, and so today the markets are positioned very differently than they were going into 08. They're much similar to where they were going into 2000, 2001. But as far as the economy is concerned, I think the economic fallout will be much worse than the recession of 01. It's certainly far, even worse, rather, than the, o the recession of 08, which we now call the Great Recession. I think this one is going to be worse. And, and in fact, I think when they do write the history books about this time period, it's not going to be about rolling recessions. It's going to be about a, a depression. You know, we, we just don't realize that we're in it yet, but at some point when the historians look back, this is going to be considered a depression, not just a series of recessions.